subject what many organizations made to accommodate, build, and take care of them. Like the NTAA, um, the Harris County Toll Account, uh, Harris County Toll Authority, and uh, more. So those are the major ones I can name off the top of my head also with the Express Lane System, other Central, which works with Tech Express, you know, to, they're kind of located in Spain, but they work with Weber here in, uh, here in Texas. And, uh, there's lots of tollways here. But, uh, but the first toll, the first system of tollways I talk about is Houston. Houston is a very interesting place with the tollways because there are lots of them. And Houston is a place with lots of freeways because it's basically the epitome of freeways and there's so many out there that that you would actually um you actually be surprised by how many they are. So first we'll start with the Sam Houston Tollway, which forms a loop around uh, Houston, outside of the loop outside of Loop uh, 610, also known as I 610. Um, it runs. It was initially, it was initially meant to be a freeway, but recession in the 70s and lots of things associated with that stopped it from happening and turned it more into a. a turned it more into an obsolete project but luckily they made it a tollway and they managed to find land to build it and they built it starting like the 1980s 1970s late 19 no early late 1970s to to that to late 2000s and uh, it was built in phases because many tollways are built in phases and it runs for an expansive amount of time with a project being a uh, currently happening on the I think on the Houston is it like it's the Channel River that there's a project going on there and it hasn't finished yet but it's been conceptualized for a long time because uh, as a because the very large and long running tollway with intersections with I-10 um, I-69 pretty sure I-69 I-45 and also intersects with the other tollways we'll talk about in this video. Next, I'll have to get next. I'll go on to next. We'll talk about the Grand Parkway, which is another outer loop, which also, which is not completed yet, but it's gonna be complete in probably the next 20 years because most of the loop is finished. And uh, what I can say about that is, um, it's a loop outside the loop already formed by the Sam Houston Tollway because if you can see Sam Houston Tollway right here the Grand Park Grand Parkway goes immediately outside that and it's quite amazing what happened and uh, and, uh, and it's meant to kind of for like that urban sprawl effect because everyone talks about urban sprawl a lot but this is a major example of it because these because these two, because Houston having three loops is absolutely crazy, in my opinion. But I guess they just do that. Uh, we can also talk about next. We also told us like West Park, uh, Tomball Parkway, Tomball Tollway, and also um, Fort Bend Tollway. They might not be the most important tollways, but they do get you places, and. Uh, and that's what, and, that and those are very important to the city. But the most important things are the express lanes, which can be found on basically every major Houston interstate or freeway, including I-69, I-45, uh, I-10, and uh, State Highway 288. And also on, also there's sometimes occasionally on uh, I-610. Uh, Express lanes make an interesting combination because it's very, it's meant to alleviate uh, congestion during the peak hours. Whether this works or not, more research will be done on that because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It kind of depends on how they're used because calling it, a, calling it a, a carpool lane sometimes doesn't work because Traffic during rush hour always will be extreme, and sometimes expanding the freeway might not be the solution in some cases, as most people like to say, because 
extension of free will is something that's kind of very scrutinized as of nowadays, where people actually starting to be open to other ideas of how to get traffic better, like rail, uh, more pedestrian access in the city, and making a place actually walkable. But um, I think that's about it for Houston because Houston is amazing, it's very big, and it has lots of freeways that uh, gen that most people outside Texas would be very, very concerned with. And now moving on, I'll move on to um, I'm about to move on to San Antonio because San Antonio really doesn't have much going on in it except like a HOV lane stuff like that on I-35. There's also I-410, also I-10 goes through there too, and uh, and not much goes on there except tollways because there's not really tollways and much toll lanes on a freeway to kind of help with the traffic and stuff. But what? But while Houston does have lots of tollways, I think uh, Dallas Fort Worth Metro has lots of tollways too, because you can kind of see it everywhere. Because we can go to lots of freeways that were turned into tollways eventually, like State Highway 121, st uh, State Highway 360, or like Texas 360, Texas 121, and others. Because um, Texas uh, once. Texas one because Texas one twenty one. It usually goes to the areas of Grapevine, uh, Fort Worth, and Bedford, Lewis that area. And and from on and like if you go north, if you go like a if you go, uh, if you go north instead of south, it turns into the Sam Rayburn Tollway, which it has interchanges with. Um, which is just with Dallas Parkway, also has a Dallas Moon Tollway, President George Tollway, I 35E, and more. Because these tollways kind of help form the loop and they're decently traveled on, even though people prefer to use freeways more. Because there are lots of tollways in the Dallas Fort Worth Metro, with a lot more being planned and uh, lots of expansion coming to the area. Because, for example, Loop 9 is basically just. Uh, Continuation of President George Bush toll uh, turnpike, which ends up going a little more, which ends up going east, is an eastern extension or southern extension because you know it kind of it starts off from where it ends at I-30 in in Garland, and it moves quite a lot. It goes through Sunnyvale, Ski, and then. And it shifts towards other places too. Because they're planning lots of tollways, and tollways have become a massive part of what they want to do. Because the main thing with tollways is that they're kind of made to be paid off, but it didn't always work that way. Because everyone knows, everyone who lives in Dallas probably knows about I 30. I 30 was initially known as the Dallas Fort Worth Turnpike, Turnpike from I 35V westward. And it was a, and it's one example of a tollway that actually got paid off and turned into a freeway because currently they have plans on actually starting scrapping all turnpike interchanges because Loop 12 is an example of one. Uh, it's scheduled to be reconstructed starting in 2027. Uh, there's also Texas 360 one I talked about. That one's nearly done, but it was also an old turnpike style interchange. And there are also lots of other examples I can uh, name, because Hampton Road, uh, there's Hampton Road because it's very classically, and there's Fort Worth Avenue because it really does sometimes look like a turnpike, even though it has been modernized in lots of aspects. That's Fort Worth Turnpike has had to go, and I-30, I guess, Tom Landry Freeway is kind of the new norm there. Uh, but all I have to say about tollways is that there are lots of them in Texas. You can find them in random places in Texas because they're being built everywhere. And tollways are kind of that new way they're using to actually try to expand the metro. Because as you can see with the Dallas North Tollway, they actually managed to extend it. They're going to extend it all the way to nearly to Oklahoma, even though it starts in Dallas. And uh, I find that very interesting because that's the ultimate plan they're gearing at. 
and uh, I six and uh, I six ten, multiple express lanes, lots of express lanes on all these uh, freeways. There's also a part of it because uh, one thing I need to elaborate on is the express lane system. The express lane system is kind of the kind of makes the uh, express lanes a little separate from the uh, freeways in some cases. Because you can see on I six thirty five in Dallas, uh, west of US 75, the express lanes are completely different. They're under the main lanes and they have their own exits and their own uh, and their own direct exits to some places. Because this is kind of common because you can see with the North Turn Express, like you will go on I-820 and then you'll see that, oh, they'll give a direct exit from the express lanes to that specific street instead of having you detour back onto the main lanes and taking the front road and this is becoming quite normal because they kind of use these to make express lane exits to other freeways express lane exits to that and it kind of all connects if you kind of start from maybe you start from 635 west of US 75 you can get all the way to I-35 E which takes you to 12 which also ends up taking you to 114 and 183 which ends up taking you to I-35W but first you have to go to I-820 so it's kind of a system that all connects and it's also being expanded out and tollways in Texas are a very interesting thing because they cost money and uh, not many people like them because rates are increasing and uh, everything rates are increasing and if you want to drive on one of these because the more they get extended, the more miles you can drive to get to them. And they're using tollways and to connect cities and things like that. Like the Gateway Alliance Freeway. It's a freeway for now, but it's going to be a tollway eventually. Even though they open the main lanes. And it kind of shows you how much they're planning around tollways. Because they're using it to get money to fund all these freeway projects. Because on the economy isn't looking very good. And I guess that's excuse they're kind of using to fund these billion dollar projects you see on the other freeways like uh, like the construction of I-69 the construction of uh, the I-820 and I-10 I-20 and the US-287 project lots of these projects are kind of funded by these tollways because they use them to get money to do these projects because they want profit in return for all they get and uh, I don't know when next I'll post, but I'll try post soon. Try to post next week, and hopefully the video. And hopefully soon I'll talk about how the I-635 East project actually and managed to turn around their horrible decline because it was looking very bad. But in 2024 they actually managed to get more complete than they did before, and most of the years combined. Um, this has been another video, and. Uh, Thank you for watching if you actually stayed around. Uh, I know it's kind of boring, but I'll try to make it more interesting. This is my first video I actually edited, so um, see ya.